Excellent. <laughs> oh, hey there. Check this out. A new Springo. But is it really a square or a circle? And is it really purple or gold? Whoa! <laughs> hey friends, how's it going? I know, it's been a good while since my last long format video, and I guess you might like to see my latest creations. Well, I've definitely got a lot to show you, but today's projects aren't entirely new. See, I'm always coming up with more and more ideas for the channel, but I'm also really fond of several projects I've done in the past, and I also get a ton of great suggestions and requests in the video comments. So, in today's video, I'm going to be sharing ways that I've revisited some of my favorite ideas and hopefully stepped things up. We've got silly prints, functional prints, even a new puzzle. Sound cool? I hope so, because it's time for Cool Prints! Alright, so let's jump right in with the ambiguous Springo. This is a combination of two concepts I've previously explored, 3D printed Springos and ambiguous shapes that look like two entirely different objects depending on your point of view. This square to cylinder shape was first introduced by a Japanese mathematician and artist Kokichi Sugihara around 2016, and I was absolutely blown away by the effect. So much so that I spent all night recreating the shape and then revealing the secret on my newly started YouTube channel. That video really boosted this channel to the point where I could continue making videos for years to come, so I owe a great deal of gratitude to Professor Sugihara and his amazing work. Hopefully I haven't been banished from some secret illusionist guild now. I'm not sure. Anyways, fast forward to April 2020, early in the pandemic, when Sugihara started uploading a lecture series on his own YouTube channel to offer some educational respite during the lockdowns. In these videos, Sugihara goes into great detail explaining the math behind many of his incredible illusions. And I would absolutely encourage anyone interested in mathematical arts and illusions to watch them all because they're packed with some really great knowledge. In fact, it wasn't until seeing these newer videos that I really wrapped my head around the process of creating these illusions. And that motivated me to create some new ambiguous shapes of my own. The first one I came up with might also be my favorite and it's this ambiguous star to heart. Just like the ambiguous cylinder, this weird shape seems to transform based on your viewing angle, and with a mirror, you can witness those dramatically different views at the same time. It really messes with your brain. Besides blending new shapes, I also started printing these ambiguous illusions with Matter Hacker's Quantum PLA filament. Quantum PLA is made using this co-extrusion method that results in a filament that is perfectly split down the middle with two different colors. It's super cool. On top of making almost any print look better, this filament is perfect for printing these ambiguous illusions with different colors on either side. And as simple as that trick is, it really helps sell the illusion. Naturally, I made a whole bunch of different combinations of shapes to explore what's possible. I love the star, so I also did a star to diamond, star to circle, and even a star to this moon shape. And when we get to more dramatic shape changes like this, the actual shape can become super crazy. Here's a quick peek at the model in Fusion 360. I learned a lot about surface modeling in the process of making these. So let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in a full tutorial covering my latest approach to these ambiguous shapes. I also wanted to try some different takes on the illusion. So in this case, instead of swapping shapes, I combined arrows pointing in different directions. And it seems like a different trick, but it's achieved in the same way. It's also fun to have two models that look the same until you put a mirror behind them. Or how about these two arrows that seem to trade reflections? 
I've also designed some new stands for these parts because I love those little details. They're printed in a few small parts that just snap together and they help orient the parts correctly for the illusion and kind of make them look like they're defying gravity as well. At first I was using these 8 inch acrylic rods, cutting them to size and gluing them into my 3D printed base, but I decided that's kind of overkill since the stand is pretty hidden and printing it is just so much easier, but it's still an option. As cool as these new shapes are, I still think there's something about the simplicity of Sugihara's circle to square that just makes it so elegant and effective. So to enhance those qualities, I pulled a few extra tricks and I made this wireframe ambiguous cube to cylinder. I basically wanted to see how much material I could remove while maintaining the illusion. So this is my first outcome. And here is my latest, even more fragile version. This one really only works if you get the angles just right, but boy is it cool. I also just received my SLS printed version from Shapeways, and you can see how clean that looks. I'm honestly a little tempted to order a gold plated version of this print. Anyways, that brings us back to this thing my ambiguous springo. For years, I've heard your requests to make a springo version of this ambiguous cylinder, but well, I just didn't know how to pull it off. It's kind of awkward considering I've made multiple videos about turning just about anything into a springo, but this was kind of unique because in order to maintain the convincing illusion, I had to make the coil follow the same weird curve as this top surface while still being a continuous spiral. Well, it took a lot of experimenting and creative problem solving in Fusion 360, but I recently managed to pull it off. Essentially, I started with this very short ambiguous cylinder that's the thickness of what I want my coil thickness to be, and I split that into eight equal parts. Then I calculated the exact distance I had to lower each piece in order to maintain a 0.25 millimeter gap between the stacked layers. Then I used those pieces as guides to model eight new pieces in the form mode, and I was able to combine those to make a continuous section of the springo coil. Then I could just pattern that to make a full springo as tall as I want. That's the gist of it, but if you want a more detailed explanation, I give you full permission to bug me about it in the comments. I must say, it felt really great to finally conquer this design challenge, but I still wasn't quite sure how well this would actually print, or if the layers would separate cleanly, or if it would even be strong enough to play around with. My other printed springos are surprisingly strong because there's a lot of overlapping surface area between each layer. Since this springo has some steeper, irregular curves, there are some areas without nearly as much surface area between layers. My first attempt at printing this failed from a seemingly random clog, but thankfully that problem didn't persist, and on my second attempt, everything printed beautifully on my Creality Ender 7. I was pleasantly surprised by how easily the coil separated. It's still best to be gentle, but I really didn't have any problems with the separation. I even had success with this print and place stand that breaks away and eliminates the need for any support material in one fell swoop. As with all Springos, this thing is really fun to play around with. And you saw my little magic trick at the beginning, but I know I'm not the only one wondering how strong this Springo really is. Well, I mentioned that first failed print, which happens to give us the opportunity of breaking this thing on purpose. So let's see what it can handle. Hey, that's pretty good. 
Let's zoom out and try that again. See if you can guess when it will break. Wow. Hey, that was pretty good, right? As expected, it did break where the layers are a bit steeper, but I'd say that's more than stretchy enough to function as a good Springo. The ambiguous Springo wasn't my only foray back into the wonderful world of jiggly prints. Another Springo request that I got often was to make Springo succulents and cacti. So I did a little bit of research to figure out which cacti might make the best Springos. And one species that really seemed appropriate was the Sirius validus spiralis. I mean, look at it. It's practically already a Springo. That inspired me to design a Springo with a spiral insert that causes it to twist much like the spiralis cactus. So I gave it a shot. Once again, I'll be using Matter Hacker's Quantum PLA, and this is the purple gold flavor. It separated super easily, and the idea was to twist the springo to match this twisted core, and then thread it into place so the spiral holds its shape, and we get a cool gradient out of that Quantum PLA as well. It ended up being pretty tough to get it in all the way, but I managed. Additional parts were printed separately so we could get a multicolor model without a special printer or anything like that. Visually, I think it's a pretty cool print, but I had hoped that the Springo could slide on and off more easily so you could still use the Springo as a Springo. Unfortunately, the tension that's created and maybe the gripping of the layer lines makes this pretty hard to remove. So. I think the way to go about this in the future would be to simply model the spiral into the Springo to begin with. I might have to revisit that idea, but for the time being, I decided to satisfy my need for Jiggly Cactus by modeling this little fella. I didn't try anything too crazy with the Springo part on this one, but I did explore some other techniques for making this cactus a little bit more artsy. For example, with the blossom here, I left these three holes so we can add some dainty stems just using raw filament, instead of trying to print some fragile parts. I actually just learned that those little stems on the flower are coincidentally also called the filament. How appropriate. And using my 3D pen, I can also add some little blobs for the anthers on top. I also left a cavity on the bottom of the flower so I could fill it with a big blob of hot plastic from my 3D pen, and if I'm quick, that should fuse everything together. Next, there's this dirt insert, followed by the planter, which has this little thread that mates to the bottom of the cactus, so I can screw it all together and everything stays in place. And I gotta say, this thing has the perfect jiggle. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. For comparison, here's my first attempt with half the thickness for the Springo. That's not what I wanted in this case, but it is interesting that you could change the properties of a Springo so much just by changing one parameter. It's pretty cool. All right, I think it's about time we address all of this. <laughs> my brand new puzzle wall. I've been selling puzzles over at devinmontes.com for several years now, and since I'm always printing unique, one-of-a-kind variations, I thought it would liven up the set to display them on the pegboard back here. This spot has been empty for so long, and I think I've finally found something fitting for it. I will talk about this mounting mechanism a bit later, I'm very happy with it, but first, I've got some new puzzles to share. First off, I've made some new styles for my existing puzzles, to keep things fresh. We've got several new quab variations. I love this frame version that's hollowed out to show what 3D printing can really do, and it's actually surprisingly strong, but it can be tricky to get a really clean print. 
So I also designed a similar grid style for a bunch of my puzzles which have a similar vibe but they're much easier to print. I ended up trying a few different variations for that and figured why not print them all? But that's not all because we've also got a brand new puzzle. Introducing the Cyclopath. This maddening puzzle features three interlooping tracks that twist together, jumbling up 36 marbles in six different colors. As usual, the goal is to get all the light colors touching, but with these mind-crunching curves and more marbles than ever, don't expect the cyclopath to be a walk in the park. Every time you twist the halves, you're affecting all three loops, and the tangled form alone is enough to drive unprepared puzzlers insane. So, are you crazy enough to give it a shot? I know, another twisty marble puzzle. What gives? Well, for one thing, they seem to be pretty popular. The Astrolabicon and my other puzzles have been my best-selling prints for many years now. And the Cyclopath was also designed to solve a problem. See, I've bought thousands of marbles for my puzzles, and while they generally work great for Astrolabicons, some of them are just a tad too small or too large, and they end up causing problems. The thing with the Astrolabicon is that the tolerances of the marbles really matter, and that's why I had to do so many prototypes to get it working well in the first place. And I still have problems making different sizes. Here's a smaller version I was working on, and this one works, but it's been really hard to find balls that consistently work well. With that in mind, I figured why not design an awesome puzzle that's a bit more forgiving with marble sizes, that way I could use up all the marbles that don't fit in my other puzzles. Because the cyclopath doesn't have changing path lengths, the acceptable tolerances of the marbles are much greater. That's why I've been able to make cyclopath puzzles with these acrylic balls, glass marbles, and metal balls. This one's got some real weight to it, and it's super satisfying. Unfortunately, the colored coating on these metal balls can chip off, so I'm still looking for a good source of multicolored metal balls. Definitely reach out if you have a lead. By the way, I owe a big shout out to my Patreon supporters. It can be pretty challenging coming up with puzzle names that are catchy, appropriate, unique, and memorable. And for this one, I reached out to Team Make Anything through our Discord server, and we brainstormed name ideas together. We explored knots, roads, physical phenomena, and all sorts of things that resembled this puzzle until we finally landed on the Cyclopath. I think the name really captures the cyclical winding paths, the resemblance to a cyclone, and even the mental burden that this puzzle can deliver. It was truly a group effort, and I've promised a cyclopath puzzle to one lucky patron who contributed to that conversation. So let's make them their puzzle right now, and I can actually show you how it goes together. I already have these two halves printed out, and I've glued in my six magnets. So now we just need to select all our marble colors. I think these go together well. And then we'll get our clip to hold the two halves together. I also designed a new assembly tool that actually works well for all my twisty marble puzzles. And that makes it much easier to connect the two halves without losing our marbles. There we go. I like it. Speaking of the Discord channel, starting today, I'm opening up the Make Anything server to everyone. So you're all welcome to join in on peeking at my work in progress, sharing your own cool prints and suggestions, and just generally hanging out. I will still have several exclusive channels for my Patreon supporters, so I can share special STL files, do beta testing, have occasional giveaways, and things like that. It should be really fun, and I hope you'll all join, so I'll throw an invite link in the video description. We'll have a lot of links in the description for this video, so check them all out. So, that's it for my new puzzles, but 
I'm probably just as excited about my mounting solution. Longtime viewers know that I love my pegboards. I've used them all around and designed a whole range of mounts for all my different tools and art and junk. <laughs> I just love having all my stuff out of the way and yet visible and within reach. When it came to displaying my puzzles, I wanted something really simple and minimal that's also quick and easy to print. Something that brings attention to the puzzles themselves. This was an especially tricky problem because these puzzles can have rather complicated forms and I also wanted to display them at very specific angles. On top of that, my existing pegboard designs use these little connector clips that flex into place. And these have generally worked really well for me, although I just recently had my first critical failure when this pen holder fell off of my wall with no warning. To be fair, this one was printed with a generic PLA and fully loaded with some metal parts that clearly made it a bit too heavy. So while I have held my camera lenses, my VR headset, and these wooden legs for several years continuously, now I'm just a little bit more wary about trusting these tiny clips. Besides, the clips were designed for mounts that I didn't plan on moving around too often. Doing so will eventually wear out the clips as well as the holes on the pegboard. So I was pretty keen on designing a solution that's much more gentle on the pegboard and something that can be placed and removed many times over without causing any damage. So instead of trying to design a single overly complex part, the X mount is made up of two separate parts that interlock and that serves multiple functions. Firstly, it's about as easy to print as it gets because both parts print flat on your build surface with no tough overhangs, bridging, or anything like that. As long as you've got a level bed with decent adhesion, you could print these things all day, no problem. And because they print flat, the mount can be custom designed to hold any number of odd shapes. On top of that, the mount connects to the pegboard in a very non-destructive manner. When the parts are connected, these hooks are angled outwards, and that does a pretty good job of securing it in place. Luckily, I already have all these puzzles modeled in Fusion 360, since that's where I made them. So making custom mounts was just a matter of inserting those components into my X-mount project and changing a few swept paths to hold each unique part. I've also started experimenting with some reinforced mounts to hold heavier objects, like this fire extinguisher ball. Here's the mount, and this one locks to itself in the front here as well, plus it has these raised sides, so the ball is held very securely. I already have a pegboard behind my laser cutter, so I figured this is a perfect way to mount the ball above it. If the machine happens to burst into flames, the ball should blow up and release the extinguishing powder. Hopefully that'll never happen. <laughs> I've also started designing this wall mount for my label printer, which demonstrates using two X mounts together to hold larger and heavier objects. I'm eager to teach you how to make your own X mounts for all your own things, but I'll have to save that for another video, or maybe even a live stream. So if you're interested, be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss anything.
yeah, that's my way of introducing a few new Tippy Tree pieces. I spent way too much time on that. <laughs> So hopefully you're already familiar with my tabletop stacking game, Tippy Tree, because I've got a bunch of new birds. We've got the finch, a sparrow, a bluebird, a baby bird, and even a pesky cockatoo. <gasps> While I still don't have definitive rules for using these birds in a game of Tippy Tree, I'm personally a fan of having them be available as an optional piece that the player can use during their turn instead of placing a leaf. So that player loses the ability to reduce their stockpile of leaves, which is the ultimate goal, but they might be able to throw off their opponents with one of these awkward birds. <laughs> the same goes for the tippy tree berries, and I've created these little tiny versions to go with the tiny tippy tree here. As for the birds, you can just scale those down 50% before printing them, and they should work fine with the tiny tippy tree as well. Speaking of which, I've just finished printing a small handful of these first edition tiny tippy tree sets that you can buy at devinmontes.com, or you can still order a regular sized set through angled.xyz. Of course, I would argue that the most fun way to play tippy tree is to print it for yourself. And for those of you who bought the game through my mini factory, I've added all these files to the downloads, so don't forget to re-download and get all these extras for free. But you don't care about the game right now, do you? No, you've been too busy thinking about this shirt. Tippy, that's my tree. <laughs> This video is sponsored in part by That's My Dog, where you can get some rad custom merch featuring your fuzziest family and friends. Or if you're like me and you don't have a pet, why not your favorite 3D print? Tippy, that's my tree. If you also love Tippy Tree, well you are in so much luck right now because I've teamed up with That's My Dog to offer this very shirt for sale for a very limited time. So visit bit.ly slash that's my tree to get yours now. Or don't and regret it every day for the rest of your life. Your choice. You know I love being able to 3D print puzzles and games and all sorts of functional prints, but sometimes it's still fun to make art purely for art's sake. So here's a piece that I made a while back called The Observer. I first shared it in my Make Block Laser Box video when I made a few versions of it on the laser cutter. I love this acrylic version with a mirrored background, and now I have a special 3D printed version. With this one, each layer is printed separately, and there's a frame with some notches that holds everything together. I think it's pretty fun that all the pieces are still loose and you can modify them and swap them out. And on the back here, we've got a printed lip for easy mounting on a screw or nail that's in the wall. I've also had this little version, which I actually just used a 3D pen to stick a pegboard poly panel on the back. So that just pops onto anywhere on my pegboard. I love that I can make this file available for you to 3D print, but you can print it in whatever colors you choose. So it's kind of like we're collaborating on the piece of art. So if you do print one, share it in the Discord server. This one actually looks pretty cool under a UV light. Ooh. Speaking of UV light, there is one project that's missing today that I'm still really eager to upgrade, and that's Pendulous my giant glowing double pendulum light. It's definitely a favorite of mine that I've been working on, but I've still got some more hurdles to cross. So for now, I'm gonna build this KiwiCo glowing pendulum. They didn't sponsor this video and we didn't work on it together or anything like that, but I found it at a thrift store for a dollar and I was curious. So let's give it a spin. 
Maybe you're wondering why I would share this similar product after flipping out about my Astrolabicon puzzle being copied on Kickstarter. In case you didn't hear, that campaign did get shut down. Not too common for Kickstarter campaigns, so thanks to all my supporters who made noise. But I want to show you that I can appreciate another business taking inspiration from my work. My channel is all about inspiration after all, and I believe all ideas are built off of predecessors to some degree. To me, it's really about intention and distinguishing products. KiwiCo has clearly put a lot of work into creating something unique here. They've reinvented the glowing double pendulum as a low-cost, easy-to-build educational toy for kids. It has its own look and feel that pretty clearly differentiates it from my design. Anyways, let's turn down the lights and try this thing out. Hey, that's pretty great for something I built in 10 minutes. It definitely doesn't spin as long at this smaller size, and that just really makes me want to make an even bigger one. Okay, cool. That was a lot to get through. Don't ask me why I insisted on making this one big video, but hey, you watched it, and I certainly hope you enjoyed it as well. Let me know if, uh, if you prefer these long videos or if you want more concise individual project videos. Again, make sure to check out the video description to find all my 3D prints and STL files, to join the Discord server, to order this dope t-shirt, and lots more. I want to thank you for spending your time with me, and I hope you'll be back soon for more making. Until then, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything, and as always, stay inspired. <laughs>